Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Revenge of the Q and R A. The hat is full of questions. I am full of answers. Not really any announcements today. Um, the Goopity shirt is still on sale, so if you want to go buy that, go buy that. We oversold it, so we had to order some more shirts, which means there are now even more extras, if that makes sense. It was going to be sold out, but then they had to order more, so now there are more than, than there originally were, so buy it before they sell out for realsies. Um, what else? Tex Murphy will be Tuesday. That should be fun. Um... I don't, I, I guess we'll finish Shadow Warrior hopefully sooner rather than later, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's really it, that's no announcements, so let's get down to these questions, right, that's why you're here, you don't care about the announcements, okay, um, question the first, this comes from Marcus, who says, hey Jesse, when you were a teacher, did you have any specific rules in class, like, no gum, or no picking your nose, well, who am I to say no to gum and nose picking? But, um, I did. I did have a lot of really, like, strict rules. Uh, it wasn't things like, don't pick your nose, but it was things like, be on time. When the door closes, the door's closed and you're late for class. And you have to go get, like, a slip and a hall pass, things like that. Um, I was, th I was that asshole. But you had to be strict. Like, I think I've said this before. I taught in, in a, a, a really... It wasn't necessarily the best school system, so rules were were needed. You had to have rules. Uh, if you didn't, the students would walk all over you, so you had to be very strict. Um, what I did do that I think was in the students' favor, that I think benefited them, was that I told them to question everything. That was my big rule. Uh, before, I would think it was like rule zero. Like in the first day of school, I wrote it on the rules, on top of it, and like red marker to make it like, oh, I'm such a rebel, I'm writing my own rules on the rules. It was, it was silly, but um, it was question everything. And so it was question why I have these rules, question why I told you to take this test, question why I said what I said about this time period that I said it, or this book that we're reading or whatever. I think that was the biggest, most helpful rule because I always had an answer first off, but secondly, it was, one of those things where it made the students feel like they were more in charge of what they were learning and had reasons behind why they were learning it, which I think uh, helps in teaching. So that was my number one rule that I can remember. It's been a while, guys. I don't remember what all my rules were, but they were pretty strict things. Uh, so, yeah. By the way, teaching, it's hard. It's tough. This is who I am. Imagine me teaching having to be the tough guy, like, hold on now, do, do your homework. Whew, that was rough. Okay, uh, moving on. Question the second. This comes from Bill, who says, You said many times you love story-driven games, but which genre do you like? Crime detective story? Fantasy story? I suppose for fantasy story, uh, it can be broken down to JRPG fantasy or Western-style fantasy, sci-fi story, Western drama, horror. Um... Honestly, the best kind of story, man, I like I like a good mystery. I'm a big mystery fan. Like uh, stories that have plot twists and stories that have unexpected moments, I think are my favorites as well. I think some of my favorite stories are the ones where you think it's going to be one thing and it's not at all. Like um the reason why I love Ace Combat 5 is because just go watch the trailer. Go find the trailer for Ace Combat 5. Watch it, and you'll be like, what the shit is this game about? There are demons? And it's one of those it's not what you think kind of moments. It's really exceptional. It's very good storytelling. Um, Vagrant Story? I love the fact that, that game was... It, it was kind of like the song Stairway to Heaven, and that it gets... It starts slow, and there's a mystery behind it, and then it builds... And then it builds, and it's like, what is going on right now? And then it builds, and it builds, and the ending is just amazing. Vagrant Story is that type of game. It's very, very good. Um, I like Final Fantasy VI because of the unexpected twist that's basically like halfway through the game. Uh, I mean, I've spoiled it a million times. Halfway through the game, the bad guy wins, basically. Um, 
It's it's stuff like that that really impresses me. Like Empire Strikes Back for a movie, the bad guys win. That's an unexpected moment. Uh, no Country for Old Men, right? The way that movie ends, you're like, what? What? Um, things like that. Uh, uh, the Usual Suspects. All those kinds of storytelling devices I really really like. Um, really stupid twists I don't like though. Like there's a line between a good plot twist and a good mystery and a good who done it. And then a really bad one. And usually, you can see the difference in just picking any two M. Night Shyamalan movies. Like, get Sixth Sense and then any of his other ones. And be like, yeah, no, I see what happened here. He used to be good, and then he became crap. So, yeah. Um, I guess that kind. But uh, I like Western RPGs more than JRPGs, if that would be a thing. Because JRPGs, my monitor just went dark, classy. I need to buy a real camera. This webcam thing ain't working out. <laughs> it's such a pain in the ass. My monitor keeps going like red, white, red, whatever. Um, JRPGs, I just don't like nearly as much because they've just become real stale. And to the point where sometimes they just don't make sense. Like there are two, two extremes of JRPG. There's, I don't know what the fuck's going on, slash Kingdom Hearts. Or I am so bored right now, slash Final Fantasy XIII. Like, I just, I like how I use, <laughs> poor Squeenix. I'm sorry, Squeenix, you are my go-to for all JRPGs, but, um, yeah. There's, I don't know, Western RPGs just do it for me now, but the problem is, Western RPGs, a lot of them really suck, so, maybe just in general, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Look, look, I've been rambling. Let's move on. Let's move on to another question. <clears throat> oh, wait, I don't want to look. Question the third. This comes from... Anon, who says, Jesse, will you be going to RTX? Um, I guess that's the Rooster Teeth convention that's over the 4th of July? <laughs> um, maybe? I, 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 I have wanted to go, and I know there are a lot of you who go who want to meet me, but I think my parents are coming out that weekend, or whenever that is, and so they'll be here for a while. I don't know. It might just be bad timing. I'll say maybe. Let's, uh, move on here. We're doing a question of the fourth. This comes from King Size. It says, have you ever thought of going to MAGFest? Really? This is, we are, we are on a theme right now. Um, MAGFest, I have thought about going to, but every time I hear stories of MAGFest, it seems like a lot of drama. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just hearing weird stories, but it seems like a lot of, of needless drama at MAGFest. And what I like about PAX is it's so big, you can't get caught up in the drama. But MAGFest, I guess, is, like, the perfect size for YouTubers to, like, get into it. And that's stupid. That's dumb. So I don't I don't know if that's the place for me. Because if, if, you, if you know me, you know I don't. I don't like drama. I will shoot people down real quick and be like, you need to grow the fuck up, man. <laughs> like, that's, I don't have tolerance for that. So uh, I'd rather just avoid it. But, at the same time, I've heard it's a really, really, really good con. So, maybe it's a great con, but there are some bad seeds. I don't know. I mean, that's just what I've heard. I've never been, so I don't know. But it has jaded my views of the convention. So, yeah. Moving along. Let's do one more. Why not? Uh, question whatever this one is. I forgot what the number was. All right. Lego My Ego Loss says, Jesse... If you could ever turn into Danny McBride, like in This is the End, please promise you won't eat Crendor. First off, if I were ever to become a post-apocalyptic road warrior, um, I would not eat Crendor. He's far too bony. But I would let my minions eat Crendor because they need to eat. I'd find, I'd find the rich people and I'd eat them in front of my minions so that they thought I was more of a Robin Hood character than I'd throw them the scraps. Also, I would... Have to have some sort of gimp character, so uh, Sam Strippin will be my gimp. And um, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, well, first off, I'd be a pirate. I wouldn't be a road warrior. I, I live near the water, so I'd find boats, and I'd hijack boats and be a pirate on the seas. And so that's, it'd be like road warrior, but on the ocean. And I would sail from port city to port city, raiding and pillaging, and I'd, I'd, I'd trade in diamonds and 
Look, I don't, I don't know what pirates do. Here's what I've learned from thinking about the post-apocalypse. I'd be a bad person. Because when you see the movies, like, the bad people always are in the best positions. Like, who runs Barter Town? Evil Tina Turner. Or, you know, who's the guy with one eye who's on the boat with all the oil? in Waterworld, a bad guy, right? All the good people, they get screwed constantly. I've seen all the Book of Eli. Good people are just, all they want to do is protect the Bible. They're just getting murdered left and right. Meanwhile, crazy guys running towns are like, yeah, I'm evil, but I have everything I want. I'd be that guy. I wouldn't tolerate this barely getting by. Let's be clear. If this is a religious apocalypse uh, and there's a rapture, for example, all the good people are gone anyway, so I know I'm bad, so I might as well just be bad. Uh, if this is like a nuclear apocalypse, I'm some mutant. No one's going to love me, so I just got to be a mean, awful human being. Um, really, I have many examples, mostly me leading to becoming a pirate. Also, here's my problem. I just realized they're, they're probably mutant sharks now, which is not cool. So I'd be a land pirate. <laughs> this is, I'd be dead so quickly. <laughs> Let's all hope that the nuclear fallout wipes us out very quickly. Let's all hope that because my plan is crumbling apart right before my eyes. Speaking of crumbling apart, Spleekling, yep, this is my English and this episode. Thank you guys for watching. I will be back with another one of these shortly. And as always, to be continued. Space butterfly, space butterfly, watching the world as we take to the sky. Everything perfect, made by design. Kaleidoscope was built by a mind, built by a mind, built by the mind of one lone soldier, hoping to find an army, army. An army of space butterflies, eyes, 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 eyes. Now to destroy all.